Hi, I'm Lucy Reed. I'm a family barrister and mediator, and I've made this video for people who are going through a family court case but who don't have a lawyer to explain things to them. The video is mainly prepared for parents involved in disputes about their children, but should also be helpful if you're involved in another kind of family court case, for example, about your finances after separation. As a family barrister, I'm in court most days dealing with this kind of case. And I know that coming to court, particularly when you don't have a lawyer, and particularly for the first time, can be a very stressful and confusing experience. I remember the nerves I had when I first started as a lawyer and had to speak in court, and I have first-hand experience of the stress involved in representing myself. I meet litigants in person every day who are finding things very stressful, and I'd like to help make it a bit easier. Of course, this video isn't legal advice, but I hope it will be helpful. Although you'll probably still be nervous about what will happen with your case, it might help a little if I talk through some of the practical stuff so you have less to worry about and can focus upon saying what you want to say to the judge. This is the third of three videos that I've made, so it might make more sense if you've watched the first and the second videos first. In the second video, I told you a little bit about the hearing itself. In this video, I'm going to talk about giving evidence and about challenging the evidence of other people. Not every court hearing will involve the judge hearing evidence. If the parties haven't been able to agree about things and it's clear that the court will have to resolve a dispute about the facts or a significant dispute about what should happen in the future, the judge will probably have to list the case for a hearing with a time estimate that is long enough to cater for the giving of evidence. If your court order says that the hearing is listed for 30 minutes to an hour, the judge is probably not planning on hearing any evidence although he or she will listen briefly to what each person in the case has to say. Often the evidence will just be from the parties to the case, that's usually you and your ex-partner, but sometimes it will also be needed from other people who've witnessed something happening or from a professional involved in the case, such as a CAFCAS officer or a social worker who's written a report, and occasionally from an expert. The court hears evidence from people so that it can decide whether what they're saying is accurate, so that it can assess the parties generally, and so that it can decide on whether a professional opinion is well founded or not. The evidence is tested by the parties and the judge asking the witnesses questions, and this is what's called cross-examination. If you give evidence, you'll be asked questions by the judge and by the other person or their lawyer if they have one. The judge will make sure that all of the questions are appropriate. If there are allegations of domestic abuse, the judge may ask questions on your behalf so that you don't have to ask one another questions directly. If your ex is asking you questions directly, try hard not to get involved in an argument with them and just to respond to the questions that they're asking you calmly. While you give evidence, you'll usually be asked to sit at a table or in a witness box like this. Before you begin, you'll be asked to swear an oath on a holy book or to affirm if you're not religious. Affirming just means that you're solemnly promising to tell the truth. When you start to give your evidence, you'll need to confirm your name and address. If you need to keep your address confidential from the other person in the case, you can complete a C8 form at the court instead, asking the court not to disclose your address. All the evidence will be recorded on tape or in the magistrate's court by the legal advisor taking notes. You'll usually have a jug of water and a glass on the table when giving evidence. Don't be afraid to pause and pour yourself a drink if your throat gets dry. Here are a few pointers for when you are giving your evidence. Try to speak up so the judge can hear you and try to speak slowly enough so that the judge can take a note. Try really hard to listen to the whole question before jumping in with an answer and try to answer the question that you've been asked rather than using it as an opportunity to make a speech. Try not to assume every question is a trick question. It can make the process longer and more frustrating and can give the judge the wrong impression. Take the question at face value and give an honest answer. If you need a break to go to the loo or you just need a breather, say so. Sometimes the questions are too complicated or unclear if you don't understand or forgot the question, don't be afraid, say so. Don't get annoyed if a lawyer asks you questions that you don't agree with. That's the point of the process and they're only doing their job. View these questions as an opportunity for you to explain why you don't agree or why they're wrong. Don't adopt a policy of blanket denial. If a criticism is justified, 
be prepared to acknowledge that. If you don't accept the evidence that someone has put in their witness statement or their report, you'll need to ask them questions to show the judge why their evidence should be put to one side. And we call this cross-examination. There is no need to be rude. Try to ask questions which show why what the witness is saying can't be right. You can ask them about, for example, why they've said different things at different times. Or, if there's something important missing from their witness statement or report, ask them why it's not there. Try to ask focus questions that have a yes or a no answer. For example, asking the witness to agree with something you say is true, rather than asking a big, wide question and letting them ramble off the point. Try to ask simple questions, taking each point separately, rather than great long questions that contain several points all jumbled up together. Don't ask the same question over and over in the hope that you'll get a different answer. You won't. If there's an inaccuracy, politely show the witness the evidence that demonstrates the error and ask them to correct it. The judge may stop you and ask you to rephrase your question or say that your question is not allowed. It's the judge's job to make sure that the questions are appropriate and that they will be helpful and relevant. You don't need to ask questions about things that the witness agrees with you on. You can ask the judge for help if you're struggling to phrase your questions. Remember, the aim is to ask questions, not to argue. The witness doesn't necessarily have to agree with you for you to make your point. Hopefully, some of the tips in this and in the other videos will be helpful to you. Although going to court is stressful, even if you do have a lawyer, a little bit of preparation can make it easier to deal with and understanding what is likely to happen can take the edge off things. Best of luck. In order to make this film, we've had to get special permission from the court service and we're not allowed to film people involved in real cases. You should never record your court case unless the judge has given you permission. In these videos, we've used our volunteers to show a scenario involving a male litigant in person and his Mackenzie friend and a female litigant and her lawyer. Of course, in your case, it may be the other way around. There may be no lawyers at all, or you may both have a Mackenzie friend.